You're building third rail in third rail territory while trying to electrify the railway. Okay, before we get going, let's quickly talk about third rail and OLE, the two main ways to electrify the railway. Huh. Right, electrification. Third rail is, uh, exactly what it sounds like. A third rail next to the running rails, carrying DC current, picked up by a shoe on the bogey of the train, and OLE, overhead line equipment, is where we have wires over the line. Not very unexpected. These carry AC current, and is collected by a pantograph on the roof of the train. Now, there are two distinct regions of third rail and OLE electrification, with the southeast being third rail, and everything else being OLE. Well, everything electrified, that is. Except Liverpool for some reason. But these two regions will be important later. So, what actually are the advantages between Third Rail and OLE? Third Rail is much cheaper to build, as we don't need to do foundations for the pylons, or actually have pylons at all. But Third Rail also just fits almost anywhere. There's no expensive changes like raising bridges or lowering the tracks, but Third Rail also has its drawbacks. Quite a few, actually. Being down on the ground, Third Rail is very prone to issues with vegetation and ice, and is also very dangerous for workers on the tracks and trespassers. But I can't lie, if you're trespassing on a railway, then you had that coming. But that's not even all. Third Rail uses DC current, which loses a lot of energy as heat and also isn't very powerful, meaning trains on busy lines struggle to go faster than 80 miles an hour, and even just the shoe rail interaction means you can't go faster than 100 miles an hour anyway, whereas OLE can run almost as fast as you could ever want. And seeing all of this, the ORR says, basically, you can't build third rail unless it's literally the only option. Stuff like the Northern Line extension. Now, this sounds like a really good idea, right? If we're going to spend money on electrification, we should build the better version, right? The one that's safer, more efficient, more powerful, and actually works with electric freight. Now, we also said we wanted to decarbonize the railway. Which means we probably need to get everything electrified. But there are a few diesel lines in the southeast, the Uckfield branch, the Marshland line, and parts of the North Downs line. Now, the issue with the first two is that if we were to electrify them with OLE, none of the other stock in the area would be compatible with the line, except allowing 395s to run to Hastings. But that aside, that's one of the main advantages to electrifying these lines gone, as we can't simplify the fleet in this region, as it's almost all Electrostars in the area, and dealing with one type of traction or even one type of train makes maintenance much cheaper and simpler, but also operations more flexible as any type of train you have can run any type of route, so the only real benefit you'd get from OLE electrification here is the better acceleration and deceleration and reduced pollution that comes with any electrification, but that alone probably won't justify the large cost of OLE electrification, and the new OLE compatible trains on top of that. The cost just doesn't make a lot of sense for these shorter rural lines, and it's exactly this type of situation that leads back battery and hydrogen trains being seriously considered, which are a lot less efficient than proper electrification, at least for now. Now, the North Downs line is slightly different, as it does run into some OLE territory around Reading, but a decent part of the route is already third rail electrified, and there also isn't really common train type in this area. But still, the cost of OLE is much higher than just building out the rest of the third rail to finish the route. But of course, OLE is too expensive, third rail is not allowed, and battery trains are the only ones being considered, even though this is a 45 mile long line, and proper electrification would be much more efficient and give much better value for money. Now, if this region of third rail is such an issue for the electrification of these lines, 
and also has power and safety issues, why don't we just start replacing the third rail with OLE? There actually had been some talk about this, especially in the Southampton area, due to just how much freight comes through here, and electrifying this freight would allow more freight trains to run, as, as we've said before, third rail just isn't powerful enough, especially for heavy freight trains. Now, one of the issues with third to OLE conversion is again having stock that's compatible, as until you've converted every route the trains could possibly run on, you would need dual voltage trains or two separate fleets of trains. And that isn't too bad if we just plan for that when ordering new trains, but we aren't really seeing that. The new 701s have no pantograph, and that's probably down to the fact that conversion to OLE is just really unlikely. It for sure would not be cheap, but definitely more importantly, a very large amount of the network isn't even electrified to begin with, and money would probably be better spent on that first. Anyway, I've run out of things to say now. Hopefully we see some solution to this. And uh, yeah, I guess that's all for today. See you next time.